Um, we are the fourth grade team. Um, myself and Mrs. Boyette are the ones who teach literacy. Um, that includes social studies, reading, writing, and um, spelling is incorporated in and grammar incorporated into our classroom. These are some of the things we're going to be talking about. We're going to, we've done that. We're going to talk about why they should read 20 minutes. We're going to talk about the Celebrated Reader, iReady, and StoryWorks. Just to get you, give you information about the resources that we're using um, here in the classroom. So the first thing we always like to show parents is why should your child read 20 minutes a night? And that is one of our homework assignments every night is to read 20 minutes. And this is the research that comes why we do that. A child who reads 20 minutes per day, 3,600 minutes per school year, that's 1,800,000 words per year they're exposed to and that they're learning. They score on the 90th percentile on standardized tests. Now, of course, this is not a guarantee, but it does improve their chances because of the exposure they've had to all of that literacy and reading material. A student who reads five minutes per day, which is 900 minutes per school year, that's 282,000 words per year. They score around the 50th percentile. And then those who read less, and the whole point of that is because as the child reads and talks with you about what they're reading in class and at home, they are broadening their knowledge base and their vocabulary. So if they start reading for 20 minutes per night in kindergarten, by the end of sixth grade, student A will have read for the equivalent of 60 additional school days. Student B for 12 school days and student C for three school days with the information that they're gaining. So to be a better reader, we simply just want them to read. And that brings us to Accelerated Reader. This program that we are using, we kind of tweaked it this year because we want to focus on children reading, whatever they're going to read. So the Accelerated Reader program allows them to choose the books that they want to read. We encourage them to do it on their reading level, but if they choose a book that is lower than their reading level, that is fine. They will still be um, presented with um, literacy elements and uh, vocabulary, even if they're not reading on their reading level um, every time. There is a reading range when your student gets their TOPS reports. Um, there's a reading range for them to choose from, I mean, not choose from, that they show. We pick their AR um, book level based right in the middle so that it's not too hard all the time, it's not too easy. That gives them a good place to begin to choose their books. And then the quizzes monitor their comprehension of what they've been reading. Which, in the past, we have been focusing on all three of these, their book level, their percentage correct, and their points goal. Um, this year, we are focusing on their points goal and their percentage. We're really just allowing them to read whatever they want to read, but we want them to have 85% correct on their quiz. That will enable them to get the points goal that has been um, set for them. Quick question. Yes, ma'am. Are you find, finding that not pushing them to read a little bit higher or a little bit harder books is benefiting you I mean, or benefiting the student because I mean I know that they're probably most likely going to make better on that test because it's an easier book for them to read and more comfortable at it they understand more but in the long run is what I'm kind of that's where we come in as partners just to make sure that they're still trying to focus exactly on we don't we want don't want to, to take away the joy of reading so we try not to push it constantly but that's where the parent comes in and says I see You've been reading these books, let's read one up higher. We always do that in class too. You know, hey, you've been reading some of these books, why don't you try one here? But it's not a constant push to always be above that book level goal. And, and most of my kids are taking their tests based on their little reading books, reading groups. Okay. So, which is very close to where they're supposed to be anyway. Okay. So, so that, between we, what's read in class and what they choose. They can um, have a good exposure to a whole bunch of things. 
and they are doing she's miss saunders is doing another star test this week next week next week to begin the quarter two to see growth an updated test she wants to know if she can get books like at, uh, other kind of books you know for ar to read for her child to read home because she doesn't have internet access Yes, we get the from the library, but you can also, I mean, from our library, library, yes, too, and they, know they have it set up with an AR program as well. And she can access the internet from the Kenley Public Library too, if she wants to go on the internet. And, and Maritza has these little books. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good questions. All right, next thing is I ready. The progress report that came home this year was their first diagnostic test for I ready. This is a program that adapts to the student's performance to find the level where they are. It's not all hard, it's not all easy. The computer adapts it as they go through to fill in the knowledge gaps that those students have um, individually to that student. It's not uh, based on anything but what the student is performing. That allows us to be doing things in the classroom but also building up those gaps that have occurred through the years to kind of make a, a more holistic learning approach. We have three diagnostic tests. They have to show 19 points of growth from the beginning of the year to the end of the year to show um, a year's worth of growth. And so the one in the middle is more of just a check. It doesn't really count. It's the beginning to the end, but it lets us see if we're showing good progress in the right direction. You can access iReady at home, so they can take their tests. I mean, their, do their lessons and the quizzes that follow, they can do that at home. They also do it here at school in centers. And those diagnostics do keep up with their time. If they're going too fast, it will tell them, or tell us, we need to slow down. And then the last two things, um, on your table there is weekly, which is the uh, what we use for social studies, and a StoryWorks magazine. These are resources that we use for our Common Core Literacy. It covers all of our standards. And then the Social Studies it also covers our standards um, for Social Studies, and it's on a fourth grade reading level. The students have access to this online so that they can go online and hear the articles for those students who are struggling with um, that level of, of material. It also allows them to see words that they don't know how to pronounce because there's a lot of new content, um, academic vocabulary presented in social studies. The tests on um, the quizzes that we do, they are allowed to use their materials. So it's not anything they have to do from memory. It's really more of can you find the information in your text, which is a skill that they have to use in the EOG. So we practice it all year long which is supposed to, if they're using the resources, increase their success on those activities. And then the other one, the story works. Um, these are all of the stories. They're different kinds, fiction, nonfiction, poetry, um, paired texts, and there's always current events in there, which allows us to keep the students aware of things that are going on in the world to increase our global awareness. And these are just some, some reading strategies. I know that you've heard this before, so it's nothing new, but read with your student, read to your student. It doesn't matter how old they are. You can read more complex things than they can, and then you can talk about it, which increases their vocabulary and um, content knowledge. Expose them to a bunch of different kinds of texts. It doesn't have to be just their AR book. Anything that you can read, let them read it because that exposes them to different kinds of texts. Um, make it reading a priority, and encourage them to read their 20 minutes a night. If we tell them to do it and you tell them to do it, hopefully we can get them to do it. The more you read, the better you get. And then encourage your student to be an active reader. 
Ask questions while you're reading to yourself. Visualize what you're reading. Reread it if it didn't make sense. Make connections to other things around you and use context clues for those unfamiliar words that we hope are being presented to them in the texts that they're reading. There it went, there it went. Oh, there it goes. All right. Oh, no, it went too far. You got excited. Oh, it went too far. I shall back it up. Oh. Okay, so our next focus is writing, where uh, we're working on basic writing mechanics, grammar, and content, um, and working on short answer responses on tests. They, it is so important for them to put some details in their short answers, uh, not just your, uh, your quick and easy answer. They have to show how they know and where they got their information. Um, and we are focusing on the writing process. Um, we're trying to get them to use dialogue in their writing where they're having to use a lot of quotation marks. And you will notice a lot of their writing when it comes home and it will start coming home because we've been working on them. You'll see the writing process. We take them through all five of these most of the time so that they see from the brainstorming idea process all the way through to the publishing and rewriting the steps that it takes to present their thoughts in the best way possible. Not a, a one, cl one classroom project. It's going to take a week, two weeks to go through this process. All right, so uh, please remind your student to follow the basic writing mechanics that they've learned each time they write. Finding that fourth graders are still forgetting the capital letters at the beginning of sentences, the punctuation. Um, I have seen a lot of basic words that they know not spelled right because they're trying to get it done. So um, they just need to remember, just remember everything they've learned basically and just use it. Um, and they need to be able to give an explanation with details to support their answers, which is what I was uh, just saying. Um, and when writing a short answer response, write what you would say. And here is a website about writing under the common core, greatschools.org. And this will be on our website, our fourth grade website, so you'll be able to have access to it. Okay. Um, yeah. The thing about writing what they say, if you ask a student an oral question, they can just go on and on and on and on and on. But when it comes to writing it down, it's four words. So we want them to express in writing what they would actually communicate to us if they were just talking with us. Yeah, because I they, they've started to tell me an answer and I'll go, no, 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 go write it down. And and it's just um just hard for them sometimes. All right, so here are some EOG websites and apps. They have practice tests for them. Which EOG seems like a long ways away, but it'll be here before we know it. Okay. Got it? Thank you. Different things on um, your phone or your iPad that you can type in and it will give you all different kinds of free resources that you can use with your child. Um, ReadWorks is a good resource too for um, comprehension activities that has questions with it. Oh, she didn't realize that it was another piece. Oh, I got it. And if you ever have a question from, shoot us a dojo message. We can tell you some places to go um, if you need some, uh, you know, some additional ideas. Yeah, because I'm an old technology teacher, so I always go straight for the websites before, when I'm uh, thinking about doing stuff with the kids. And they do have access to Discovery Ed, too, via the county. So sometimes that's, I don't know, just a good resource to do some reinforcement of activities. All right, so the standards-based grading, there's four levels. 
the N not demonstrated, the beginning, we're in the initial stages of the grade level ability, which right now we're at the beginning of fourth grade. So a B right now is not horrible. Uh, a P is progressing, again, beginning of the year, that's a good grade. M mastery demonstrates full understanding of content standard consistently, keyword consistently. Um, if they made a hundred on, or not a hundred, if they had an M on one or two things, that doesn't mean they mastered the, the whole standard because it all circles back around. And those of you who are here for um, open house, this was the example that we used. Um, we had to rush through it, so I wanted to put it up there again to see if there was any questions you had about um, the um, assessment scores that were given to these answers. Um, and these are actual answers from real life fourth graders. From this year. So, um, Basically, if you notice, as they go along, they express more and more of details that show that they have processed what they have read. And that is what the standard is, in depth, drawing on specific details. So what the reader is doing is expressing that they it and can manipulate it and use it to um, answer questions. It's not just, um, I read it but I can, I can work with it. And that's what we're trying to develop in our fourth graders. So at the end, they've put an answer, but it doesn't even answer the question. They just put something down. Um, it doesn't mean that they couldn't do better, but for this one, they, that's what they did. And um, here it says, the story tells hints. He lets us know time is passing by the background changing. They're noticing differences. They're seeing it, but they haven't expressed it to us so that we know that they understand it. This, um, they're getting more details, being more specific so that the person reading their answer sees they understand it. And then this particular child for this answer gave multiple ways to know that they understood it. They gave a page number, they gave time, they gave weather to talk about the setting, which is multiple ways of expressing that characteristic of a story. Um, we grade to the um, standard instead of the activity. So if your child didn't get got them all right and they got a P, that's because we're still going to be using that same skill in a different way and we haven't completely covered the standard yet. So look for the letter, don't worry about what you see as far as um, if there's not anything marked on it. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call um, your teacher. And then these would be year-long standards. No one apply grade level phonics and word analysis skills and reach coding words. They're going to have to do that all year long. By the end of the year, read and comprehend informational text. So this, on a fourth grade level, so this will be all year long. This, demonstrate and command the conventions of standard English grammar and use it when writing or speaking. They will do this all year long. So these will not be M's until we consistently see all year long that they are doing this on a fourth grade level. Okay? And that's just the end. <clears throat> do you have any questions um, that you would like addressed? In class every day, they're on the computers. They I'm are. Ready. You said in class. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I said in 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 class. Oh, but in yes, class. I ready. <laughs> so much said in They class. are <laughs> using the computers, so they use that resource. They have literature that's written. They have that resource. There's a lot of different ways we present it to them, and um, to give them many opportunities to be able to express back to us what they are, the knowledge and the abilities that they are beginning to incorporate into their own. So if you ever have questions about something you see or something that your child talks about what we're doing in class, please don't hesitate to call us. We'll be glad to explain why we're doing what we're doing.
much. Well, it is exactly 6.30. So if you do not have, oh, oh I was going to tell you one other thing. The papers that you have, these are cootie catchers. Well, that's what we call them. I don't know what the kids call them. That's what they're called. Cootie catchers. Um, these little things that you can ask your child questions interactively while you are reading, while they're reading. One of them is fiction. One of them is nonfiction. Once you cut it out, the side can be a bookmark, which allows them to always have that questioning stream with them so that they can make sure that they're understanding what they're reading. And here's a QR code on a, for a folding video on YouTube if you want to scan it. Or you can just go to YouTube and probably just search Cootie Catch. <laughs> Thank you. And for those of you online, if you would like one of these, your teacher can send it home with your child if you'll just let us know. <laughs> No, it's kind of, you're telling me.